Look into my eyes and see the fire burn, the fire of my Viking blood. Terror, slavery, and death, these are what the Vikings wrought. Quell the fire I must, fight rekindled embers I shall, to make the ashes safe for silver wings to spread, the wings of peace. What's patriotic is to try to hold your country to the ideals and values that you were taught and believe that it was founded on. And those, um, those values and uh, ideals, I think, are betrayed when we are discouraged or prevented or otherwise um, prevented from expressing dissent. I asked many of the people at this candlelight vigil if they would go on camera and tell me why it was important for them to be there. Most of the people I asked declined. One woman said, oh no, I better not. A man said, I'm in a public position and I, I can't be seen here. I have also attended rallies in support of the government's decision to go to war. And I want to make it clear that these were not necessarily pro-war people, but only in the support of our government's decision to go to war. There are not very many pro-war people, actually. At the rallies in support of war, I never found one person who declined to go on camera. Therein lies a problem that a person speaking in support of peace against war feels they cannot exercise their right of free speech. Some have said that those who protest the war are unpatriotic. Do you feel unpatriotic? No, I think uh, that's uh, a, a, a ploy to um, uh, shame some people out of their, their First Amendment rights of speaking up against uh, the administration. And also, it uh, makes, it very, makes it very divisive. I'm Bill Olson. I made this film. I made it in support of people who have been intimidated into silence because they oppose war. Is it unpatriotic to be against the war that we believe is coming? Or any war? No, I don't think it's unpatriotic at all. I think our country was uh, founded on protest. Take the Boston Tea Party or the Revolutionary War or whatever. But I think when we elect leaders, um, we don't elect them to do whatever they want. We have to hold them accountable. In fact, I don't even think um, if we say peace is patriotic, I think we have to go beyond what it is even to be patriotic because patriotism can have a little bit of nationalism in it, quite a bit. And we have to care about the other people in the world. So I think it, you can take it too far the idea of being patriotic. So, and I think that when we need to, we need to raise the questions. We need to stand like women in black are doing and make people think about what's going on and try to change it. Um, I don't believe that patriotism is, is flag-waving and agreeing with everything that the government says. Uh, I think it's participating in democracy. We have a democracy in this country, at least we've had one. And uh, democracy is participatory. And we have the right and privilege and should be informed, that's part of our citizenship, of the issues. And if we think that something is wrong, 
If we don't agree with something, we have the right to talk out about it. And it isn't that we're particularly criticizing the government or the president, but we're expressing a different opinion. And so that's our right as, as citizens. And I think I was very upset with President Bush's uh, statement yesterday that of all the war demonstrators, he doesn't have to pay attention to those people because that's a huge minority. It's probably a minority at this point yet of those people who are objecting. Uh, but it's a large number, and I think he must listen to the will of the people. And it isn't that we're against the, the veterans, and I, that's something that has hurt a little bit to think that people think we are against the veterans, that we're not supporting them. I pray for them every day and pray for their safety and pray that they don't even have to go, that they can stay here with their families and take care of their families and uh, be with them and, and make a good living. And uh, so it's not that we're against them, we're supporting them all the way and we're praying for them and, and uh, hoping that they'll come back soon. I have been thinking a lot about my daughter's future and uh, I think there's a lot at stake in the world and kind of choosing between two different directions and I'd like to see it go in a more peaceful way. Some people like the president have made unfortunate statements <laughs> that uh, people protesting against the war are not patriotic. Mm -hmm. Do you feel any patriotic? Um, depends on what the definition of patriotic is really. Um, my definition would be um, acting in the interests of our um, friends and neighbors in our country. And um, under that definition, I would think that people looking for peace are just looking for different answers to the, the problems of today. So, patriot, sure. Saturday when we were at the rally at Wausau, there were, well, I've heard different numbers, but some say up to 200 people who were for war and they came with their bush signs and their American flags, waving their flags like we weren't the Americans, you know. But there were some American flags in our groups too. And, uh, you know, they had a right to say what they needed. And uh, we invited them, the speakers did, several of the speakers invited them to come and mingle with the crowd and uh, talk to us and they, chose to remain to one side and try to be disruptive. And uh, that's not participatory democracy. Well, they have a right to their, their opinions too. And, you know, but it has to be set up in a, a relationship. Uh, we're all related to one another in some way or another. And we have to listen to one another. I believe that war is really not necessary and it's outmoded. We can't afford to have war as an international community. We just can't. Um, what we need to be doing is caring for each other, not killing each other. And um, I need to stand with other people who have that kind of perspective and be visible uh, in order to demonstrate that. It's all about great relationships, peace is. You know, remembering who we are and not stubbornly sticking to your opinion. It isn't that it's my opinion that I want right or wrong, but it's, hey, I have an idea, I see something that I think may not be right, and I want to talk about it. And I, you know, if we can keep that sort of openness and uh, sort of an open forum, uh, then we will come to some sort of an agreement. I feel that in some ways I'm probably more patriotic than many who want war because my patriotism is about this country and the ideals of its founders and all the people who've, who have worked in all the many ways that they have for human rights. 
and if there's anything that this country has represented, it's represented hope for human rights. And now I'm afraid that our country is not necessarily representing that. Um, so I want to reclaim this, the flag of my country. Um, it's important. I guess patriotism is um, is perhaps uh, narrowly defined, uh, but I love this country and I love uh, the freedoms that we have, and certainly want to s share those freedoms around the world. But I don't believe that invading their country and bombing them is going to be uh, a way to foster democracy. Another thing is that uh, the Bush administration is using this, the United Nations as a, as a weapon of war. He's trying to get the Security Council to go along with him. I think as a way of wiping his hands of any further res uh, responsibility for the bloodshed there. But uh, as um, anybody could find out by reading the list of UN agencies, all those agencies are meant to uh, deal with the effects of, of war anywhere. Health, nutrition, refugees, children's health, all of those things. The UN is meant, is developed out of the, the ashes of World War II. And uh, it's meant to prevent war, to resolve conflicts without war. Uh, so I think Mr. Bush is demonstrating that he is the rogue, rogue state that he hates uh, to see in the world. Um, I think dissent is critical to a democracy. I think that the, the more discussion and the more voices and perspectives we can listen to, the better uh, solutions we can come up with. Because I, I think we are better than the sum of our parts. We're greater um, than the individual um, pieces that we represent, and together I think we can solve lots of problems. And that violence isn't isn't the only answer to to conflict. I lived in Madison during the Vietnam War, uh, the big uprisings. I was on campus down there, and that was frightening. I mean, you know, you'd go to class the next morning, and there'd be big hunks of cement gone from the curbing that somebody had knocked out and thrown at a policeman or some dissenter. And there were cars tipped over and burned and um, it was just really frightening, frightening to be down there at that time. I finally had to move off campus. It was that, uh, that uh, well, disruptive. We couldn't sleep at night. Uh, our, our dorm was tear gassed one night. The, the uh, dissenters had decided that they wanted to get the grad students riled up, so they came over to our dorm and where most of the grad students were living and tear gassed it to, to get us upset, you know. And, uh, so that, that's, I don't think that's exactly the way to do it, but to keep an open mind and an open heart, be open to one another. Well, there actually was somebody in our dorm that a student who dropped a bowling ball out of the ninth floor window and it hit a policeman in the head. And, the, you know, you hear about it at first, but you never hear what happened to the person afterwards. But he supposedly had severe brain damage and his life was ruined. For what? You know, for what? I'm trying to get my opinion across, which isn't you can't get it across with words, <laughs> it's, uh, you have to try something else, but not violence. Violence only breeds violence. If we would spend nine billion dollars of the war funds that we're planning on, we could provide the whole world with, with good water. And take another nine billion and you could supply them with food. Take another nine billion and you could supply them with with medicines and health care and you know we'd have friends and not enemies we wouldn't have to fight any more wars and I think you know this it's scary too because with all the nuclear possibilities now we could start something that would be the end period complete destruction of the world I hope that everyone who sees what you put together will find it in their hearts to work for peace at every level for the rest of their lives.
study 